I'm not gonna say YOLO, but that's basically what I just said. Hello world, it's another rainy day in Oregon, and this is why I left the SSI, part two of why I hate college. And to start, we're gonna rewind four months ago to the end of the summer when I came back from some really amazing trainings, and I started to realize that the life I had built for myself at the SSI was no longer in line with the way that I felt like I needed to change the world. And I actually thought about leaving the SSI before the school year even began, but I decided that I should stick it out and as director, try to support some changes in the organization to bring it up to the way that I thought we needed to change the world. And that's what the struggle was really about, was trying to live a life with my values and my dreams and my visions, like, very present for me, and not put them on the back burner for some in waiting time that may never come. Fast forward, and I didn't really accomplish those changes, and time was a really big factor. We don't have that much time, none of us do, and I was splitting my between school and the SSI and my organizing, and as a result, none of those things were getting done very well. And because I can't quit school no matter how much I want to, and another reason that I hate college, I had to decide between the SSI and my organizing, and the first thing I considered was that I could leave for six months uh, from my organizing and just focus on the SSI and really buckle down for the end, finish hard, put some structures in place, and then leave it better than I had found it. Something I feel really good about, but then I'd have to leave my organizing and come back in six months when that's what I was doing after college and it felt really weird to take a hiatus and it was not a convenient time for the plans that we have. And that almost made me decide at that moment that I was going to leave the SSI, but then one day I was sitting in my Buddhism class, we were talking about compassion and values, and I was doodling a comic of my life as a superhero, and I started to realize that I don't want to look back on my life and be the person that abandoned an entire community of people because relationships and community is something that's super, super important to me and the SSI is like a family to me and I didn't want to feel like I had abandoned them just because it got difficult for me. And in that moment, it switched everything and I almost decided to stay for like a week. I thought that I was going to stay at the SSI and then one day someone came up with a really amazing idea, one of our staffers, that really embodied the organizing ideals that I had imagined for institutional change. And we thought that people would be kind of hesitant and resistant, but we brought it to the staff, and they were ecstatic. They, like, lost their minds, they were throwing out ideas, they wanted to do the work. It was amazing, and I think in that moment, it really solidified for me that I could leave, and these people would be okay. And it's hard to say goodbye to those people, because I love them so much, but I'm gonna see them for the next six months. And it's also really hard to let go of that control, because I have control issues, but seeing their passion and their vision turned this opportunity into a time for me not to abandon them, but to create opportunities for them to be leaders and take more ownership of the organization and really make it what they wanted, to be, wanted it to be and not what I wanted it to be. So I feel a lot better, actually, about leaving the SSI where it is now, no matter how difficult it is and how rough it was to leave. But a really big part of this, going back to the very beginning, was living this life through my values because I started to realize that I don't want to change the world from inside the system. And there are some really amazing opportunities to change the world inside the system, especially at a university. I totally respect and want people to do that work, the social justice work, the sustainability work, because that's what gave me the opportunity to be where I am now. And I think it still needs to happen, but I also believe that people need to be working outside the system. And the really big, exciting part about asking people to join me on this transition and this amazing journey is I get to ask other people to agree with that too, that we need people to keep running the system. You know, otherwise things will fall apart and people will starve, but we also need people working outside the system to put pressure on it and change it and demand that social change. I'm excited to get to bring everybody on board with this journey, but I also hope that I get to inspire people along the way, and I wanted to specifically call that out because I think that a lot of people have passions and visions and dreams for themselves, but I don't want people to keep on neglecting those things because we don't have that much time and you never know when things aren't going to work out for you anymore. But I think that there are some really amazing opportunities and the world could use some passion, some vision, some compassion, and some love in the world. These big decisions will come up, life will be hard, you'll have to weigh a ton of pros and cons, and those were just a few of mine. It took me literally months to come to where I am now. But I hope that you're all willing to examine the world, examine yourselves, and make those really tough decisions, and live a life that will make you actually happy in the long term, because you only get one of them. I'm not gonna say YOLO, but that's basically what I just said. That's that. Make sure you subscribe because life is coming. I've got some really cool ideas coming up and like, who knows? I don't even know what's going to happen later. I'm late for class. I gotta go. Have a great something. Bye.